very much. I'm going to call the open meeting to order now. Is there any declarations of conflict? Can I get an approval of our agenda? Thanks, Jake Gatzer, Deputy Mayor. Um, approval of our minutes from February 9th. Okay. Is there any business arising from our minutes? Perfect. We're going to move right into discussions and reports. And we'll start with the event management report, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just go through a quick few highlights. Um, as always, we're continue uh, bidding and prospecting uh, events for future years down the road. Uh, we have a number of wins now and a number of other bids going to, uh, to market. The Ice City Festival uh, was to wrap up this past weekend. Um, as you know, it's been highly successful. And with March break on, we've worked an agreement that we will run it again this weekend, expand it one additional weekend. So um, we're happy uh, about that. Um, we also were able to get back to some more normalcy with the elevated protocols being released in the um, CPHL planning. Um, up next, there's a, there's a few events. Uh, Andrews Hockey has a two-line um, hockey series um, showcase. They refer to a number of things other than tournament. You can't call it a tournament in the existing landscape. Uh, the Blizzard Fat Bike Festival, Music PEI Week, uh, the Junior B Playoff Series between Kennington and Sherwood is moving to the East Link Center because of the capacity to seat over a thousand people. Oh. They feel that they can reach those uh, numbers given the demand on that. Yep. And um, the East Pointers uh, show will happen um, in the near future at Confederation Center of the Arts. So a few events continue uh, to happen in the, uh, under the protocols that were dealt. Um, lots of discussion with Canada Games on a number of fronts, not only on this committee, but other committees. We recently uh, entered into an MOU, as you know, with respect to the city's uh, sponsorship for the Games. Um, we've had discussions with uh, the games recently about uh, potential waterfront legacy that would be possibly left from the um, cultural festival that will happen in those areas that's ongoing and staff recently uh, participated in a um, I would say uh, a visionary planning session around cultural uh, events with many cultural people across the uh, island um, organized by the uh, Canada Games uh, host society and just as a, a note of reference uh, a number of the infrastructure enhancements that East Link Center and or Bell Alliance Center have started or are about to commence so okay. that work is getting ready to roll out um, immediately uh, we're very busy the sport tourism uh, events Congress is next month we have a lot of commitments to this um, event it's all virtual which makes this more uh, demanding to prepare for uh, we have a number of videos. I participated virtually on a CPL um, panel. Um, we have um, uh, a number of sessions that we're involved with there, sport event exchange, et cetera, through our partnerships, so it's coming up. Uh, our sport tourism recovery action plan that bridges us from 2021 to 2022 as a part of the pandemic has just been just completed. We'll talk about that in a moment. The Sport PI Awards uh, were, uh, were held recently at the Confederation Center of the Arts. Uh, the mayor presented uh, the team of, or sorry, the event of the year award, which went to U Sports Women Hockey at uh, UPEI. And we had a webinar, uh, sport event exchange webinar with Sport PEI yesterday, which the chair uh, participated on. The mayor and I recently uh, visited the Mi'kmaq print and design shop. Uh, we've been working with them to try to create opportunities at various events where they can sell their wares. A lot of young entrepreneurs, uh, social enterprise, um, learning skills, being educated and putting some of their goods to market. And uh, the city through uh, the mayor and um, our department recently purchased uh, uh, apparel for council. We should have that in your box, etc. We encourage you to wear that and you get show your there. support. Yeah. Can I say? Quite a little operation. They're located in the, um, the St. Nice. Paul's uh, Parish nice. Hall. Second floor. Yeah, second floor. Right. It's a good, good spot. Jill has one. Um, Charlton Islanders hockey has returned to action. As you well know, the Island Storm will not return this season. They'll focus on next season, obviously, at this point in time. And work continues on the YYG Charlottetown Recovery Task Force. So just a few highlights. Wow. Good job. Thank you. Any questions for yeah. him? Thank you, Mike. Wait, just a. Uh, Go back to the the uh, labeling or the classification for uh, Alan Landers. So it's not called it's not called a tournament due to uh, 
called code of protocol, as I understand. It's yeah, you know, it's a two line event, so they can I think essentially attend to ten, up to ten people, I believe, is okay. the capacity they can have per team. They have to meet all the same protocols with respect to the, the arena. Right. Um, but it's more like a showcase in a series. It's it's competitive. There's a, an event happening right now, or just in that it was at four arenas across the island, a couple in Charlottetown, I know Hong was involved, maybe the APM Center um, as well. All island teams, obviously, but it's moving uh, people around, it's bringing heads and beds in Charlottetown, and it's putting bums and seats at restaurants. Okay, the the uh, Junior B teams, I, I, sh I should know the answer, but I don't, is it the Falcons? Is that what they're called? So Metro. Metros. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. They were the Falcons, right? Yeah. yeah. The minor hockey team. When did come the Metros? This is Junior B. Just recent, recently, I believe. Yeah. I know. And then the Kensington is the Vipers. Hey, who, who owns the team, Jason? I don't know anymore. Okay. Well, you know what? That's good news. If they're drawing over a thousand people, I think that's good news. Good yeah, for so them. So series we call is East Link Center. Oh, well, good for them. Yeah. Must be. That's yeah. good hockey. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what, what are we doing for uh, women's hockey uh, at that level? Uh, you know, there's a, there's a real emphasis here in North America over the last month or so. I mean, you see it done at the pro level where, where they're supporting women's hockey. Are, are we doing anything to, uh, to elevate hockey uh, at a much higher level where <coughs> it's uh, devoted? And, and, and dedicate strictly to women's hockey at, at that upper echelon? From an event hosting perspective, we've hosted some of the biggest events and teams in the country with respect to women's hockey. We hosted the Women's Canadian Team Olympic yeah. Training Camp yeah. here. We hosted the SO Cup on three occasions, and the first year was when all the elite players played before they reclassified that. Okay. Um, That's right. Yeah. We're recently uh, in discussion with, there's a women's uh, dream tour. They just played at Madison Square Garden, so they will be playing, I don't yeah. date in front of me, in New York. We've been in discussion uh, with uh, them about a future um, event. We try to do it under the, uh, uh, make a pitch under the ball setting, but because of television rights, it has to be on the West Coast. So that's some of the things that we're doing from an event perspective with respect to programming specifically, that would be more recreation related. Yeah. Or as opposed to, like tournament driven or or uh, no, I mean like in, in, in terms of leagues, like okay. all the establishment yeah, leagues okay. or tournaments. I was just thinking, to, yeah, yeah. 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 Thinking but women's this. women's sport is at a, at a pinnacle, and we're we've had some great women's events here in yeah. in Charlottetown. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just thinking, Wayne, there's a real push. Yeah, you know the huge. NHL sponsoring yeah. a lot of these <clears throat> huge push and a lot of talented athletes. There's a discussion about a women's uh, basketball league starting up in the Atlantic region. Uh, I think they're looking at the University of Prince Edward Island possibly as a location for that. Uh, Wayne, can you take this under advisement? Lacrosse is big mm -hmm. down through the Atlantic seaboard. In fact, it's even more popular than soccer. And there's a professional team in Halifax. There is. Can, we, can we explore the idea of having some of, some of that, that caliber of lacrosse being played here in the capital city? I mean, it's a great sport, and I think people are really, I mean, if you love hockey, you're going to like lacrosse. Mm -hmm. It's starting so, to take uh, off here a little bit, too. In the, the younger, it's starting to take off a little yeah. bit with the well, younger, talking, but I'm having that kind of an event, at yeah. The pro, at the pro level, yeah. Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, we uh, yeah. maybe we can have that Halifax team come over here and we can showcase it here in the city. Yep. Mm. You'll That's good. Great. Thank you. Laurel, mm. tourism and culture report. Okay, I'll keep it short because I know we have a lot of items to get to um, as we have been doing really um, since before the pandemic be began, but more so since it did start. Um, we've been working very collaboratively with Wayne on a lot of our files, so I'm not going to touch on anything that he's already talked about. Um, province is hosting the Tourism Industry Forum and Tourism PI's marketing launch tomorrow virtually, so if anything comes out of that, that the committee should be aware of before the next meeting. I'll be sure to circulate some details by email. Uh, Festivals and Events PEI is also going to be hosting a Q&A with Dr. Morrison and Premier King next week. So we're hoping that they may be able to provide at that time some more information around what the summer may look like, particularly the early summer in terms of events. So that will be in a better position to be able to lock down some details um, about our civic events 
in particular Canada Day. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that we all like to eat. We've demonstrated that. So there's two promotions that are going to be going on um, over the next month and a half in the city to support the restaurant industry. So the first one is the PEI Dine-In and Save promotion. So that's a partnership between the province and the Restaurant Association from March 21st until the 31st, Sunday to Wednesday. Um, if you visit a participating full full service dining restaurant, um, you're going to get 50% off of your meal, up to $15 per person. Food and non-alcoholic beverages only, but uh, it's a great way to get out and support the restaurants on the days that have been a bit softer. The weekends they've been doing pretty well, um, so they're they're trying to drive people there on the, the low days in an effort to increase um, you know, work hours and things for the servers and, and revenues at the end of the day. Um, Discover Charlottetown also has a new um, promotion going on. You may have heard it and wondered what it actually is. It's meat and potatoes. So it's going to be April 1st to April 30th. Um, and this was an initiative that um, they were kind of asked to come up with because Burger Love is going to be delayed until the fall again this year. Oh, okay. So restaurants did express that April is a really soft time and they were disappointed to see that that was going to be moved to September again this year. So Discover Charlottetown took the lead. They partnered with the um, regional <coughs> tourism associations across the province. So it will be province-wide, but it's being driven out of the capital and, and a good majority of the 60 plus restaurants that are participating are located in the capital. Um, but the uh, cattle producers and Atlantic beef products have come on. So basically, they're not limited to hamburgers. It's any meat and potato style traditional meal. It can be a burger, it may not be. Um, a lot of it will be beef based just because of the partners, but they aren't limited to any particular meat. So the chefs are gonna have a good time. The only stipulation was they had to use potatoes as a side. So um, those, uh, mm -hmm. those menus should be launched in the very near future. Um, you can go to discovershaltown.com slash meat and potatoes. And if you type any combination of that and spelling it will still come up <laughs> so just just put uh, your best foot forward for um, how you think that should be spelled and get out and support um, those businesses and discover Charlton's new initiative um, I've been working with a colleague in Regina on a Canadian capital cities organization speaker series which is um, an initiative that's come out of the recent strategic plan that was adopted. So the first um, speaker in the series will be on April 13th. The topic um, is going to be about building a visitor economy after COVID-19. Um, so Wayne has, has been pegged to be one of the panelists for that speaker series. Um, he'll be talking primarily around sport tourism and how that can be utilized to, to um, drive tourism after the pandemic and um, there'll be more information coming out about that in the next couple of weeks. And then, as this committee would be aware, the city was supposed to host the Canadian Urban Forest Conference last fall. Um, it was postponed until the fall of 2022, but we have resumed the planning cycle. So we had our first executive meeting last week, and the first full committee meeting will take place next week. And um, there's been a few staff changeovers since we would have wrapped things up last. So Jessica, uh, Corbin Goral, and Doug will both be joining the committee as well. Excellent. Good. And that's all for now. Thank you. Any questions for Laurel? Good. 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 C, 2023 Canada Winter Games Cultural Festival. Yeah, as mentioned, um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, we've been working closely with Canada Games um, on a variety of areas, but the specific one is uh, to do with the cultural festival. The cultural signature cultural festival in Charlottetown will very much help and happen around the waterfront. So uh, around Port Charlottetown, Founders Hall, uh, the city's indoor skating rink. Uh, there could be other areas that CDC owns and the city owns that area. It's very much coming together. It's going to be a big, a big push. Um, it is Play a Canada Games. Play them. So what months are we looking at? February Council Tree. I think it's February 17th to early March. Okay. Yeah, I have to read here. Yeah, February 18th, 18th to March 5th. I'm sorry? February 18th to March 5th. 23, right? Yeah, okay. 2023. And so the, the cultural festival very much engages the community as well as the visiting families and athletes can come downtown um, as well. It's usually a, a happening spot. 
The Canada Games uh, has a desire to use the seaport center of which where Charlton Harbour Authority is housed. In the city's current um, bylaws, it's <coughs> the port zone and it specifically indicates what that particular structure can be used for. We've been down this road before. Um, some of the uses are listed in your, um, your report. Um, we can use for things like um, offices, marina, outdoor storage, port land use, retail shop, uh, transport terminal, transportation services, etc. But they can't be used for events unless council gives a variance yeah, to the agreement. And we've been down the road before where we've sought permission to have a variance. We've done East Coast Music Awards events down there. So today, um, what I'm recommending is that this committee endorse the request. We send it on to planning, who will bring a resolution to council. And it is somewhat time sensitive in that the games are still a couple of years out, but the planning has to happen right now. So they need to know that this is going to be the foundational piece to their um, um, festival on the waterfront, along with many other things. Predominantly what would happen in this is music events in the afternoon and evening, smaller concerts. Um, there would be other cultural type of activities and initiatives. It could be sponsors, it could be activations and things and such. The port is very much on board with it. As you can see by the letter of request, yeah. Mike Cocker, the CEO, has signed off on uh, the letter. So we're just looking for support from this committee. Wait, uh, as, you, as you can say, we're down this road before. Remember, uh, yeah. The, 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 the rationale for bringing in those restrictions was back during that whole festival of lights. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because uh, instead of 10,000, the numbers are up around 15,000. A lot of people that took liberty with, with uh, people's homes and their lawn furniture and destroyed them and, and urinated on them, and uh, people were pretty upset at that time. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe you can help me with this. I don't know if we've got to, should we embark upon the public consultation process to let them know that we're entertaining this idea. Um, I think I think now things are much more controlled yeah. uh, than they were back back then. It just seemed to be, uh, you know, just seemed to be like a Guns N' Roses concert and, 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 and everything, everything went. There was no real checks and balances and we would be embarrassed as a council and as a city. And you attended those meetings, Wayne, the residents would show up and then three weeks later in would come the business community and it just went on and on and on and on so i think it's a much more controlled it's a much more controlled environment much more controlled environment now uh, i think it's a great idea and back then the port i mean there's a lot of change a lot of alterations have been made to the port since those restrictions were brought in right Mike? there has been yeah yeah for sure and one of the one of the bigger items to council trio was the city at the time didn't want the port to compete with prior to enterprise. So they didn't want to take away from rentals of the Delta or at yeah. you know, the Home and Grand Hotel or yeah. whatever the case may be. The other thing is, is this is a winter celebration. So it's not like a summer event in a park. This is in a building indoors yeah. in a con controlled space. Yeah. They have to meet all the liquor control permits. They have to meet security requirements. Yeah. They have to meet city bylaws, et cetera. And they're, they're very much aware of, uh, aware of that. Madam yeah. Chair. Yes, uh, you and I and Councilor Tweed sit on, along with Councilor Duffy sit on the uh, planning committee, planning board, port zone. That was changed back in 2012. It was all at CDA. And anytime there was a change, remember Wayne, you have to go to a public consultation under the port zone and the waterfront zone. I think it was changed back in before you arrived, Mr. Kelly. 212, don't need to come up consultation. No, it just doesn't require a resolution. Well, we'll not planning deal with the, the rules and yeah, regulations yeah. around it's it, but I certainly variance. think we, I have no problem. Councilor or, or Deputy Mayor, do you have no, an issue? I think it's a great idea. It's a temporary variance. Are you okay with it going to planning? You're endorsing it for my and, and the zoning allows it. It doesn't require any public. Well, I, I just, I just yeah. raised it. I think he's saying it. No, it's a good point. I, I raised it because I, I, I heard it once. I'm not quite sure, but it would be a news flash. <laughs> Open, transparent. Communication's a wonderful tool. News flash. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we endorse. Thank you. Underline, mate. On to planning. D. Fame. Um, the committee may recall seeing something about this in their email, um, not in the not too uh, past future. Um, I've been working with um, festivals and major events uh, Canada through uh, my board seat on Event Atlantic. 
Uh, this organization has been lobbying the federal government with respect to supporting the events sector and the impact it has on tourism. And they've created um, a, uh, a three-step um, opening the door to celebrate together again uh, document, which they've been lobbying the federal government with. They're, they have good, uh, I say they have, a, they have good attention currently um, at the federal government um, level. We've been asked uh, to share this with our local MP, like many municipalities across the country. Uh, the mayor shared it with MP Casey, copying in uh, Councillor McCain as chair of the committee, and uh, myself. So this is more of uh, information sharing. Um, the document is attached. If you have, if you have any questions, I uh, can certainly um, try to address them. I think the most important thing from this, at least from my perspective, is, is Step number three, where they talk about the recreation of a marquee funding program federally. Uh, back uh, a number of years ago, there was a marquee program created, uh, and millions of dollars was available to Canadian Heritage to festivals and events uh, in that sector and help them rebound um, through some challenging times. Okay. That was only to meet you, right, Wayne? That was D. That was like D. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, D. Yeah. Any, is everybody good with that? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the Shell Transport Event Hosting COVID Action Recovery Action Plan. Um, again, Madam Chair, this particular item is information um, sharing. The committee may be aware that we currently have a sport tourism strategy that took us from 2017 to 2021. Then, obviously, the pandemic has hit. So we need to create a bridge um, action plan to get us to 2022. Uh, it's important that um, we do this, uh, that we can be strategic in our approach, but also to maintain support from the um, provincial and federal governments with respect um, to events. And it also aligns us as we move forward toward a new strategy, which would be um, unveiled in 2022. Sport tourism is very important to us. I don't want to get caught up in the value of it to the, the, the city but it brings uh, upwards of $45 million in impact annually on a, on a normal year. And uh, we have um, competed at the highest level within the country with respect to attracting major events. And our efforts have paid off in that we're currently ranked for the third year in a row as the uh, number one city for 50,000 and under, and number six overall in the country regardless of um, population. So it's something that the destination counts on from a tourism and economic perspective. It's a great the document meeting. is great attached. Uh, Grant yeah. McDonald's, uh, who was the original author of the uh, the original um, documents, uh, helped us complete this and, and bring us through this process. Thank you. Wait, I'm sorry. This is important. How many people is that old? Uh, Councilor, I don't have that number in front of me, but I'm going to say that it would be in the range of 1,500 to 2,000. Yeah. That's a big number. Yeah. That's a big yeah. number. And comfortably, too. Yeah, it's probably, like, that space is probably in the range of twenty-five to 30,000 square feet. Easy. It's a valuable asset. It'll bring our city to life. That two, week, that? that two weeks will be bringing our city to life. Well, we'll do it before then. Yeah, for sure. Is there any, any questions on the Sport uh, yeah, Tourism Recovery Action Plan? It's, it's more of an internal working document to grind a reference. Strategy is a good thing. <laughs> Communities <laughs> in bloom. Update. Are we back in that? <laughs> what? It was, it was transferred back to ours. No, 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 no. That was, it was came back to the community. Community. No, no, no. How do we get into community no. No. business? No. We, 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 we took a pause. We yeah. took a pause, yeah. yeah. See, when it was moved, it took a pause. Now it's it's been moved and now it's tiptoes and toes. You that make your hometown time. beautiful. Huh? That's hometown beautiful. That's still coming, but they want to branch out. So what, what are we talking in terms well, of? Well, he's going to give me a little update. I don't know. I haven't update. heard it yet. Oh, <laughs> so, um, as, the, as the committee uh, may or may not be aware, for many years the city has been a long-standing participant in Communities of Bloom. In fact, one of the original founding partners of the organization. We've won uh, numerous national and international awards. Um, the past couple of months, there's been discussion uh, by the mayor, by the chair of public works, and this committee during our budget presentation. Oh, At the last meeting, we discussed this. Oh, the mayor, okay. Um, and there, the conversation was around the fact that we've been hearing from a number of local uh, individuals as well as organizations 
uh, and the national organization with respect to Charlottetown's uh, glowing absence from the programming. Um, this item, while the budget item may have been transferred um, within the last two years to the Public Works Committee, the terms of reference remain with this particular committee. If you go look today, the terms of reference um, still indicates that it falls within uh, this um, the committee. So Communities in Bloom in 2001 is all virtual. 2002 um, would be getting back to its, its uh, normal roots where, where they come from. It's important to know uh, that there's a number of benefits tied with the program, um, especially around uh, beautification, tourism, community pride, community spheres, etc. And the final thing I would say is there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding of the program in that people think that it's costing the city millions of dollars. Many of the judging criteria already is budgeted for in line departments. It's, we're being just judged on our actual effort. The budget item is around the hosting of judges when they come. It's around the registration in the program, and it's around participating in the national symposium and being present for the awards ceremony. Um, you can see where the organization has recently um, written us uh, requesting our presence and reconsideration back into the program. So what, what is the budget item usually for that? The budget uh, this year, it's, I think it's a Five thousand or so in the six. budget, but that all, six thousand. It also, but that also includes make our hometown beautiful. Yes. Um, so we we probably have to budget a bit more next year because we need to pay for the judges' visit, like I said, our registration and then participation in the uh, the program. We took a lot of criticism when we didn't participate in the in the last edition of the in person session, which was hosted in the Atlantic region. So this year's cost rate is projected at six thousand for twenty one twenty two. Yeah, six six thousand is for make our hometown beautiful and communities in bloom in twenty one twenty two. In the twenty in the twenty two twenty three budget, we would re enter the program. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. How much? Ten uh, thousand. About ten thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Geez, I remember one year seven seven went to Victoria. It was it Victoria Vancouver Wayne? Might have been uh, Victoria. Might have been seven or eight small plants. Oh, it's counselor. It might have been uh, yeah. it's can loops. Yeah. Can drinks. <laughs> yes, sir. Did you go? We had to have our own private jet. You'll be happy to see the flowers there. All right. All right. Um, you might want to turn that off. Do you know what? We're on live. This is the kind of leadership that we have. Someone said yesterday in okay. the email, dysfunctional. And you'll be complaining how long you're meeting with because of this. Anyway, um, do you need direction from us as far as do we want to move with this? Is that what you're asking for? I'm sorry. Well, I would simply, I would simply say it is already included. It's already in the terms Wonderful. of reference already, and it's in the budget. Yeah, budget for this year. Is it under Wonderful. attraction? It, it, it's no, it's in under the tourism. tourism. So it's under tourism. Yeah. If council approves the budget, it's included for this year. Perfect. So and we'll smell the flowers soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. And we'll smell the flowers through Philip's computer screen. Tiny doodle. There. Tiny doodle. Okay. One of those hidden line items. You know, you need a magnifying glass to kind of. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you finished? Oh, jeez. We okay. do need an inspirational speaker. Tony Robbins is here. <laughs> All right. You said facilitate. We need an inspirational speaker. 2021. What's that? <laughs> Kayak tourism recovery view plan. Okay, we've reached the, the silly point, but the next three items are all information sharing, so we'll we'll go through them pretty quickly. Um, so the first item, uh, much the, the same way that Wayne has just referenced, the festivals and major events um, recovery plan. The Tourism Industry Association of Canada has re uh, released the second phase of their recovery plan. The first phase came. Um, last fall, I believe. So they're making recommendations to the federal government on how to best support the tourism industry, which as we all know, tourism was the first industry to close. It's been the hardest hit and we know that um, because of travel restrictions, it's going to be one of the last, if not the last industry to recover. So the document itself, um, if you do have time to read through it, it's 14 pages long, but it's an interesting read. Um, it's broken down in a way that it doesn't feel like you're reading 14 pages of content. Uh, they've broken the recommendations to the government down into three main categories. So 
They're looking for the government to commit to supporting <coughs> business solvency. Some of those uh, recommendations are around different funding programs, credit availability programs, um, the continuation of rent subsidies and wage subsidies, um, supporting the air sector. Then they're looking at recommendations that champion safety. Um, that could be around rapid testing. They want to do more research-based reductions or elimination of quarantine measures that are preventing people from coming into the country or traveling around the country. Uh, looking at new tax credits for tours and businesses and then a policy roadmap for what the safe reopening of borders would look like to both the U.S. and, and um, the rest of the world as well. And then the third category of recommendations falls under keeping Canada globally competitive. So while we go through this recovery process, how do we maintain a top ranking as a tourism destination internationally? Um, so they're looking at tax credits for both domestic and international travelers, uh, returning the market tourism funding program, um, funding programs for business events, which meetings and conventions would fall under, um, doing labor market research and, and having some funding programs for skills and capacity building. Uh, also increasing the funding to Destination Canada, which is Canada's destination marketing organization. So it would be the national equivalent of Discover Charlottetown. And in turn, they would flow funding through to organizations like Discover Charlottetown to increase those, those marketing budgets and ensure that they remain at the top of their game while we go through recovery. Um, and then also extending work visas um, around tourism based businesses as well. So there is, if you don't want to read the whole report, there's a summary page at the end. Um, so if you do want to take a look, then to understand what is going on in the industry and, and what they're asking the government to consider. Yes. So, Madam Chair, just back <coughs> to uh, Mr. Kevin Murphy this morning. You know, their projection for this year and maybe next year, it doesn't look very bright. And if you look at the COVID-19 economic hit, 80% is being to the hospital hospitality and tourism industry. Mm -hmm. So to recover from that, it's going to take a long time, yeah. especially yeah. people or just anyone moving. Uh, I don't know when we're going to start moving between countries. Exactly. Because uh, that border is going to stay closed until, you know, 50% yeah. or 70% are vaccinated. And then it may be, <coughs> you know, a bit tentative for, for uh, people moving around. And the cruise ship industry, I don't know where that's going. I know they're, Mike Cochran is projecting what, maybe not this year, maybe next maybe year. Next year. So I know there's a lot of plans out there, but it's just getting back to uh, some sense of normalcy yeah. that and people will start traveling and spending money. The main takeaway from this is that they, want, they need the government to make a decision on investing now, not wait until we have a better idea of when things may be able to reopen because there's businesses that won't recover. They need support now to make sure that they can make it through this period of when they can return to some sense of normalcy and then also a lot of them need access to credit so there's a government backed credit program that's going on right now that they can that they can access um they need to keep people employed there's over half a million people right now that aren't employed that would have been employed um this time last year pre-pandemic in the tourism industry it's a lot of people that are unemployed so they're looking at programs that support um, employees and businesses in the tourism sector and then also look to that competitive edge and how we can maintain it and how we can make ourselves more attractive to travelers when they are able to travel again. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. What about Tide Mine? Did you talk about it? Tide Mine? Yeah. No. Well, they probably should never get involved. Have you communicated with them? Tide Pine, what are they projecting for this? Tide Pine would have contributed to this. Yeah. So, Tyac is the, the, the mother overall. company of Tide yeah. Pine. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Are we, have you spoken to the executive director of Tide Pine to get a sense what this, this year's looking what, what What this year will look Everyone looking? is saying the same thing. It's going to be hopefully slightly better than last year, but nowhere near what we've experienced oh. in the past. The need for assistance is growing every day, and we need to be there to support our local businesses to ensure that they are there and that tourism in PEI looks the same next year as it did last year and year before. You know, I appreciate what you're saying, Ma, but one of the issues that's come up here, I am involved for last year, Change the criteria for uh, awarding tenders in the city of Charlottetown. 
seems to be a strong resistance to that, and now we're caught in this real dilemma. On one hand, we're saying we want to promote local, but on the other hand, we have, we're restricted. We got to follow procedures and process that uh, says, you know, here's, here's, the, here's the criteria, here's the template. The staff do a rating, and you know, there's conflicting messages um, or conflicting uh, procedures. I don't know what the answer is, but uh, I know in other problems they do to do whatever they can to help their own businesses. But and but we do have a criteria and we do have a process. We have to follow that. So I I don't know what the answer is, Laura. I have no idea. But I mean, somewhere along the line, we got to swing swing the pendulum back the other way. Good partnership, good activities, as much as you can provide, like we have been doing through these wintertime activities. I mean, it's hard for us to get a restaurant on the weekend, so this yeah. next initiative is just stamping that up um, for for different opportunities to try and, and engage people, for sure. Are we allowed to do street closures? Uh, say that again, sorry. Are we allowed to do street closures? Yeah. yeah. We've, we've done them the last five weekends for I, or, uh, I City on Victoria Road. So we wanted to say this weekend shut down uh, Queen Street with some kind of event, would we be allowed? Well, you, under COVID? Yeah, you can, but it needs to meet the, the various thresholds. Like, there's be certain capacity, traffic can only go one way each way. There needs to be a certain plan of compliance yeah. people on site. There, there's, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of factors, factors that you have to adhere to, right, to do it. But the one thing is, people, society is starving for something. Yeah. Right, that's why Ice City's been so popular. They, if you go to the horse and wagon rides all weekend, every load is like they they have to follow yeah, see, the demands, but mm -hmm. they're full, right? Yeah, it's yeah. non stop. Yeah. And the skating rinks, the yeah. skating rinks done now, but skating rinks are busy and people are moving around and the outdoor um, sugar shacks and uh, people are just the music and something. stuff, and it's yeah. great. The outdoor fires, yeah, we've been using them a lot as you a know, family. There's no right answer. I think generally the answer is is everybody has to do their part, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And do as, do what you can, and um, that's it. But the the key is we have to support businesses on this end so they're there on the other end. Yeah. And that's when I say businesses, I'm talking about tourism here. I'm not talking about everybody. And that's restaurants and hotels and even even retail, right? So a lot of locals have really embraced the buy into the local program. If you go to restaurants. They have capacities, but they're full of their capacities that they have right now. On Saturday night, if you don't have a restaurant, you're, or a reservation, you're not getting into a restaurant downtown on any given weekend. Mm -hmm. Which is great. It is. Hey, Madam Chair, so when I look over some of the other <coughs> um, I know Tai Pai and Tai Ak is provincial, federal, but the recommendations focus more on federal support, well, this provincial. Was, this was lobbying the federal government yeah. for support in the federal budget. Do, That's do we have any been... ideas where we can, like, give you an example. Yeah. With our procurement policy, as yeah. Councillor Tweel mentioned, it's quite restrictive how we can try to concentrate on local. But also, sometimes when suppliers have to meet, meet a, meet a uh, a request for a, a tender they, they, they were successful in getting could can't meet it because of you know restrictions in the industry whether it's manufacturing you know we have to lay back a little bit to say okay our penalties let's be a little more flexible with them that's what we can help it as a municipality right mm -hmm. that's and you know that applies to anything whether it's hospitality whether it's hotels motels restaurants cafes retail we just have to be a little more flex, flex because these recommendations are more focused on federal provincial. Yeah, and as Wayne mentioned, like supporting activity that is driving people into business districts and tours and business districts and giving them a reason to come downtown and eat in a restaurant and shop retail and um, you know stay in a hotel overnight instead of going home. Yeah. Those are things that the municipality can support so that they can happen and in turn the tours and businesses are going to benefit. We may not be able you know, to write a stimulus check because no. that's not the level of budget that we have, but we can inject you know, 5,000 or $7,500 into an event that's happening over a specific week or weekend that's gonna drive those people into those business districts. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't have the fiscal firepower that the province and the yeah, feds have, yeah. but if just where we can help in, in what we do in yeah. buying products or or, or, or providing services, just have to be more lenient. Yeah, we're investing in initiatives. Like, like, I don't want to get caught up in, in my city, but 
Ice City has brought a lot of people downtown, but it's like there's many nights, the not many nights, but a good number of nights that the Holy Grant sold out, or 110 rooms at the Delta on the waterfront, or like they're all local people. Most of them are local people coming in and with staycations, March break. I mean, uh, I was in the Holy Grant the other day. You wouldn't believe them at the March break. Yeah, package the same as there, and and uh, Rod Royalty and other hotels. It's, it's locals. And we're going to move on to the next one. Yeah, go ahead. And we'll move um, this discussion. So, more. again, information sharing. The bubble. Okay. Um, so, this is, I'm just making you aware oh. <laughs> that there was a joint letter sent from the Greater Charlton Area Chamber of Commerce and the Tourism Industry Association of PEI. It was addressed to the Premier um, on March 9th, speaking about the re establishment of the Atlantic bubble. So, we do all know that the target date was released earlier today of April 19th. There is a meeting of all four premiers this evening that's gonna be taking, pl taking place. So we're hoping for positive news there. Um, the three main focuses of the letter, which initially did focus on just the maritime provinces because there was still um, quite a serious situation happening in, in Newfoundland and in particular St. John's. But um, they were requesting that if there, you know, if there was pushback from New Brunswick that they weren't quite ready to rejoin, could there be some lessening of restrictions between PEI and New Brunswick or PEI Nova Scotia to allow travel and, and the movement of goods back and forth? Um, also, it has become more apparent that there is some discrepancies between the provinces in terms of COVID restrictions. So they are asking for more consistency between, you know, what can go on in a restaurant or how many people can be on a bus. Um, or, or things like that. Consistency in the bubble in terms of what those restrictions are. And then also having a clearly defined plan about what it takes to reopen the bubble. So if there's a scenario where we have to close things down again, then um, these businesses and these, these member organizations know what the threshold is to reach the point where we can reopen versus just waiting for information. It just allows for, for better planning. So hopefully good news will come out of that meeting tonight and We'll be able to hit the road <laughs> and have some people come over as well. I know that um, I think that there's as many people pent up on the island ready to uh, get out to New Brunswick and Nova Scotia as there is in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia wanting to come to PEI for for a weekend. So we'll get some movement going on, hopefully in the not too distant future. Good. And that's it for that one. Thank you. One more item. And then the last item I do want to clarify. So the <coughs> subject is is policy discussion. It is not a policy discussion that I'm wanting to have or that's been requested. It's a policy discussion that's um, been happening in Hamilton, Ontario. So the executive director of Music PEI shared this CBC article with us um, simply saying it's interesting that these conversations are happening. It's kind of nice for a municipality to have a policy or be moving towards a policy on fair wage guarantees for, for musicians. So Hamilton, Ontario, has recently committed um, to creating a policy and guidelines around the payment of musicians at city um, operated or city funded events, ensuring that they would be paid kind of on a union scale. It's recommended by um, the Canadian Federation for Musicians. So what that amounts to is a range of $150 to $590 for a one hour performance, depending on, on how many musicians there are, et cetera. Um, that policy they're going to be looking to draft over the next four to six months. So maybe something interesting to keep an eye on, but I will, uh, I will say that the events that we do, that we hire musicians for, we're already paying in this range. This, this is nothing new. Um, and Music PEI did make a point of saying the city is very supportive of the industry. They do make sure that payment <coughs> is fair and that they're being um, compensated for their services, not just being expected to play for dinner or anything of that nature. Um, so this is just an information sharing piece, piece that came from Music PEI just to share. Just Church. so you know what's going on in other regions around the country. And that's well, it. Well, that's great. And thank you. That was a lot of information today, but it was good. Um, any other questions before we move to adjourn? Just on our new business, oh, I know, yeah. we discussed, uh, uh, I don't know about this committee, uh, Jenna McIsaac is doing the production at the, the carriage house. Mm -hmm. Is that something that falls in yeah. Gina, tourism? We discussed it at, at our budget. the budget discussion. Yeah. 
Are yeah. we looking at pushing it forward, or what are you looking at? Well, we did put it we in. We recommended it go forward, but oh, I so understand that's that. Go to council on Monday. With the, with the yeah. yeah. Well, we get a hard copy of that prior to Monday. Yes, yeah, correct. Yeah. So the, a decision hasn't been made on it because the operational budget hasn't been decided yet. The proposed budget. They did submit a proposal. Oh, no, the city's operational budget hasn't been approved, so until the operational budget is approved, I can't answer the question. This committee did recommend it be placed into the budget. And Film Society, they were looking for, is that Film Society went to finance because it's a new initiative. Okay. And I think it's going to the chair to bring that issue up on, on, that, on Monday night. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Motion Thank you. to adjourn? Yes. All those in favor? Thank you. You look awful. Your eyes.